What's up, good people and Eagle fans? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. Man, wow, what a difference a day makes, or a couple of days make. We now have C.D. Lamb in the fold, and um, he is actually working out, getting ready for the Cleveland Browns. And we had Dalvin Cook in yesterday, who looked pretty good, they said. And what the Cowboys offered him was a practice squad place, uh, spot. It's, yeah, practice squad. But see, here's the thing about practice squad. You know, when we talking about... We sitting here, I supposed to be the franchise player, and we in here talking about practice. I mean, yeah, we, listen, we're talking, about, we talking practice. about practice, not a game, not a game, not a game. We're talking about practice. practice. That's right. We were sitting here talking about practice. Um, they offered him a spot on the practice squad, which having had the season that he had and understanding how the um, Cowboys end up, you know, or excuse me, the NFL uses practice squad to get guys on and off and so forth. He would be used. It would be actually a situation where you get him in the fold, you get him signed, and you're not taking up one of those roster spots right now. And you could, <clears throat> you could end up letting him get into speed, get up to speed, and get into shape and be able to use him down the stretch. I think that would be actually ideal because typically what happens with Zeke Elliott is Zeke the last two years he was here had the PCL injury and the hyperextended knee, in which case he wasn't as effective going down. Having him on the roster there where you could plug him in and you know give Zeke some blows and everything else and be a change of pace would be kind of an all, more of an all-in move because clearly the Cowboys are not satisfied with the running back room when you look at the cuts that they made, that they are looking for more help. Now, Dalvin Cook, of course, is out there checking things out and testing the waters and things. He'll be going to visit the Colts today after the workout that he had yesterday. So, you know, it may be one of those things that nobody offers him a deal or he doesn't like what he sees where he's going. And maybe, just maybe, he ends up coming back around to the Dallas Cowboys. So we'll have to wait and see if that does, in fact, actually happen. I want to go back a little bit here for a couple of things um espn oh i just love espn because this was six weeks uh, six days ago okay six days ago they were literally going crazy about the cowboys they weren't going to sign cd lamb and everything else and blah 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 and how everything was going to uh be screwed up for the cowboys right and the cd getting his deal done listen we've We've been talking about this ad nauseum, it seems like. C.D. is yep. he is their passing offense. Guy with led the league in catches and second in, in receiving. Mind you, I do want to remind you, he did not throw those passes to himself. Yards last, last season, it's going to be paramount. We're running out of time here. We're running out of time. We're talking about two weeks before the regular season starts, you know, opening night for the NFL. And we, we talk about C.D. Lamb, one of the most prolific wide receivers that we have in this league, still has not signed a contract time is running out to get him ready for week one but it could be some good news jerry said there's been productive conversations what that means i don't know as we keep it with america's team and that continued holdout of cd lamb for the dallas cowboys as we inch closer to week one and it might be a problem for a team that's looking to get over that playoff hump mm -hmm. but our lewis riddick sounds off on the optics of the no deal in dallas Sound they off. They developed CD. They drafted him. We know he had a thousand more receiving yards than the next closest wide receiver on their team last year. They're not going anywhere without him, and they're sending a bad message by this not getting done. I don't Ooh. know what CD is asking for, but I'm telling you this: this would be. Pri I would be basically like, what is this going to take? Because this set this sends a tone, and it sets a tone for the Dallas Cowboys, and they are sabotaging their season. The longer this goes along. Dan Orlovsky, I okay. love that buzzword sabotage. Sabotage. Do you agree with Lewis that they're sabotaging the season if they don't get this deal done? Oh, of course. But they started sabotaging their season the day after they got waxed by Green Bay and did absolutely nothing. Oh, did absolutely they, nothing. They've done, they have done nothing 
since at home they got absolutely destroyed by a guy who was playing in his first season as a starting quarterback mm -hmm. with a bunch of receivers that people were like, who are they? They got destroyed. On All right, so that's where we were. Now, I do want to remind people of something here, okay? This is, oh, wrong one, sorry. I got too many damn buttons here. This because for all those out there that say C.D. Lamb is elite um, and that basically you can just do away with Dak Prescott, I want to remind you of this play. I just want to remind you. He should have been sacked. That, if that was Dan Orlowski, he would have ran out of the end zone. Threw the ball 45 yards, finding his man wide open. That was about the easiest money that you have ever, that C.D. Lamb will ever get. Dak did the heavy lifting on that one. Dak did the heavy. Watch it one more time. For those, oh, okay, I guess we can't watch it one more time. It went back. But for those out there that just say Dak is whack, look at that. Keeping his, look at that. Boom. So the question then is, what do the Dallas Cowboys do? You got to think that this is a package deal, okay? Now, Jerry Jones, you know, some people look at this and say it's a domino effect. Okay, you get C.D. Lamb under here. I pointed out what the Cowboys have done is they basically, for the next two years, are paying him all his guaranteed money. They actually have an out after two years that they could end up walking away with only like $20 million in dead money. And two years from now, $20 million in debt is going to be nothing. It's going to be chump change. They got themselves with this contract loaded up here. Now, at the moment, they have about $35 million going into next year. And we're talking about next year, but, you know, we should be worried about, you know, next Sunday. Be that as it may, they have about $20 million in cap space right now, some of which I'm sure is going to get rolled over because the Cowboys aren't going to do too much. Now, as... The talking heads over here tell us that the Cowboys, that they've done nothing. They've done nothing to help their situation and, and that they, they, are, they suck and they lost to Green Bay and no-name wide receivers and stuff. Let's be clear here. Over the last three seasons that the Cowboys have gone 12-5, and 12-5, 12-5, Starting from 2020, they had the worst defense, scoring defense, in their history. In their history. Period. They ended up taking that defense and turning it around. They ended up being, Dak Prescott, 37 TDs, 23 TDs, 36 TDs ended up being the number one scoring offense pretty much whenever Dak Prescott played. All without doing the things that you guys, Mr. I've run out of the back of the end zone, have said that they must do. Now, is that enough to win it all? Well, they haven't won it all, but they've had the opportunity to. And the Jets, they went out there and did all those things that you said that they should do, and they ain't been in the playoffs longer than anybody. The Commanders go out there and do all those things you say you can do. And the last time the Commanders won the division was when Dak Prescott wasn't there and they were 7-9 and nine and won it. So don't go through and say, yeah, they didn't do anything. Because they, they do things. The, the, the thing with Stephen Jones and Jerry Jones is they believe in strength in numbers. And maybe that's right, maybe that's wrong. But you have to hit. If you put all your resources in one or two guys, you must hit on those guys. If you don't, you're screwed. The Cowboys figure, I can get five guys for the price of that one, and maybe one or two of them will be pretty good. That will help supplement the players that I have. It hasn't worked winning the Super Bowl yet, but it's made them to be competitive. So now, you, you trash the Cowboys and said it screwed them up and everything else. It seemed like a love fest yesterday, with the exception of the fans, because it didn't seem like for an open practice at the Star that there were a lot of people there, and there's only two of those, I believe, uh, this week, and that will be the end of it. So Cowboy fans are still a little bit, mm, we'll wait and see a little bit more. So Jerry Jones, so here's where we are now. 
now that C.D. Lamb is done, they're on to the next thing to trash the Cowboys on. Um, Dak Prescott. Jerry Jones says that Dak Prescott will be back next year. That, that, that's his belief. Um, and looking at that situation, when you look at it and think about it, at the moment you look at it and say, you got a great number one wide receiver. You've reloaded with two really good offensive linemen, we believe, in Cooper BB and Tyler Guyton. They're going to have their bumps and things like that. But you look at that and say, I'm going to have a pretty good offensive line. You look at it and say, I'm going to have a pretty good tight end. And I believe you actually like your coach because of what he's done as opposed to Kellen Moore. You're getting hit less. Your numbers are going up. You're an MVP. And I would bet if the season goes the way it does, then you may say, I want Mike McCarthy back. The other thing here is we assume that the Joneses don't want to get this thing done. It may be that Dak Prescott is still getting the wait and see attitude to see what other dominoes. Maybe Dak is waiting for the leaves to fall off the tree. See what the Cowboys do to try and make this a better team. I think bringing in Dalvin Cook and you know trying to work on the running game sends a message to Dak Prescott. Hey, we're trying to give you all the tools that you need. Now, there's players out there, and I don't know if the Cowboys would uh, be interested in this, but he actually played pretty decent last year. Noah Brown was cut by the Texans. He had about 600 yards, I think, receiving things and um, so on. But there's players out there that you might be able to get that may also help your team. Although the Cowboys, I think, seem to be very happy with the receivers that they have. And it may be that Dak is saying, listen, let me see what you do with this team. Because ultimately, the Cowboys may be better off and I know the trolls and the haters out here will say, you're just making this up because, you know, you don't want to accept the fact that Dak is gone. Well, you don't sign CeeDee Lamb and not have a quarterback succession plan out there, and they don't. The Cowboys may be better off just biting the bullet on the $55 million this year and then starting over with the contract $40 million next year. Because then you can kind of make that deal friendlier for next year and kick some of it down the road as C.D. Lamb's deal, um, you know, pays him most of his guaranteed money. And at this point, getting cap relief for Dak Prescott, you can't roll all of it over. I, I've got to check and see what the rollover max is. But if they were to get an extra $30 million right now, the Cowboys aren't going to spend that on the roster. Not at this point. And they don't want to lose that money. So it may behoove everybody why it might be better to actually wait until November. Because I think that's when it counts for the following year. Um, Jerry Jones is saying, okay, um, that he is lockstep with Lamb. Because CeeDee Lamb said, let me, let me get CeeDee Lamb's uh, quote here. Go look at the numbers together, Lamb said. They're at the top of the charts. I have no doubt that we're going to get a, a deal done. We all know what I want, uh, that I want him here. Owner Jerry Jones wants Dak here, too. So let's get this under control and kill the speculation. More than anything else, that's what I would love is to kill the speculation. But ultimately, it may be better for the Cowboys, even though it may cost them a couple million dollars more, to wait to go ahead and make it better for the cap. Um Jerry Jones, I think I am, I, th I, I think I am, I am, Jones said, when initially stuttered, when asked if he was confident in Prescott being his quarterback in 25 on a new deal. But I understand completely. I understand our challenge, but the confidence, but confident is not a word for me here. I feel that we can do it. We have to figure it out, and we haven't figured it out just yet. So that's where they are. The, you know, I, it's. If you're Dak and you look at it and say, yeah, I can get out of Dallas and I can go to New York. You look at the quagmire that is the New York Giants. Along with that, you lose all of these great Dallas Cowboys YouTuber, and then you got to go to Cop Bizzle and Bad Dog. Bad Dog, look, this is Bad Dog's pose every video now. 
Do you want to go there and literally shorten your career? Now, maybe the Raiders might be a little bit more advantageous, but again, that's from one crazy owner to another. So I see them eventually getting this thing done. You know ESPN and all those guys are going to speculate and scream that they got to get it done, and that's where we'll go right here listening to them, of course, on that one. Let's go. Let's got go. your money. That's great. The Dak Prescott situation is entirely yes. different yes. because he yes. is on the precipice of like this, the thing you dream of as a professional athlete, and that is unfettered free agency. And right now, Todd Francis' agent is talking to teams about other clients, and hypothetically, he's mentioning to the Las Vegas Raiders, to the New York Giants, hey, That's speculation. we have Dak Prescott. That, that, he can't be free. He ought to be sued for Mark saying Davis, putting things out there the like Raiders, that. I have a countdown clock to the first day of free agency, and my airplane is filled with gas. I am going to go to Dallas, and I'm going to go get <laughs> Dak Prescott because I know what a change someone like Dak Prescott can be for the Raiders who have Brock Bowers and Devontae Adams, and they desperately need a quarterback. The Giants may need one. And if I'm Dallas, I know when this happened a couple of years ago, Greeny, and Dak bet on himself, he got hurt. And what happened? He got massively rewarded. So Dak has all the leverage. Lewis had talked about that in the previous hour. So there is such a sense of urgency if I'm Jerry Jones. Tell me what benefit there is for Dallas by waiting. You have no options whatsoever. Dak has all the cards mm -hmm. stacked in his favor. And, and another great job by our researcher, Darius. I had mentioned this in the first hour today, and I couldn't remember the exact statistic, and he sent it to me. Hold up here. This just came across, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I multitask, okay? I multitask. This is why I got to have multiple screens here. Check this out. Boom. Yep, wrong one. Damn it. Listen to Michael Irvin. Talking about money, but Dak doesn't have his deal extended yet either. Is he the guy who can lead this team to a championship, in your opinion? I hope. You hope, I but hope. do you know? No, 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 no. Let me finish. Let me that finish. That's what they call a strategic pause to make you draw in for a moment. I hope. And then wait. And everybody draws in. I hope mm -hmm. people now back the hell up. That's what I said. Oh, shit. You've seen what you needed to see. You've seen enough of what we have behind him. We've seen enough to know now, stop playing. Dak Prescott is our best chance to win a Super Bowl. I know all these shows out here, they love the father. They like to talk about it because we put eye gates on their TV. But the reality is, Cowboy fans, stop falling for that. Dak Prescott is our best chance to get a Super Bowl. Now, I hope that this team understands that also and make sure they get behind him and, and, and believe in him. Wow. That just coming across there an hour ago. Michael Irvin telling, sends a message telling you this is the best opportunity we have. Let, let's go for it. It's now or never. Going back to 2020. It's not now or never. The two players who have earned the most money in the NFL, who have made the most cash, here they are. It's Dak Prescott, number one, and Kirk Cousins, number two. You ask yourself, well, is that because they're the two best players? Obviously not. It's because the situation you put yourself in is what dictates how much money is... you make. And Kirk Cousins, you like that? He got himself the free agent situation. But see, this is a little deceptive because they've only done it for a short window. They made sure, because here's, well, let me back this up for a second. See, this is the kind of slander that you get because you have to understand Kirk Cousins has made over $250 million. His contract was done, his last big one, before the 2020. Dax was. Russell Wilson um, was still on his Seattle big contract. Deshaun Watson, they have restructured his deal so many times that basically he hasn't been paid jack. He's due $63 million. So you notice, here, here, here's the thing, $63 million is not counted in there for this year. And so when you start taking, he was gone for a year, suspended, and you got $63 million, $63 million, $63 million, boom. And Pat Mahomes' deal, the biggest deal in football history, was before that number. But I'm just trying to point it out how you, they manipulate contracts. Because if you were to go through and say, since he came into the league, it's a different story. Because that 157, it's not much more than that that he actually made in his career. It's Dak Prescott, number one, and Kirk Cousins, number two. You ask yourself, well, is that because they're the two best players? Obviously not. 
It's because the situation you put yourself in is what dictates how much money you make. And Kirk Cousins, you like that. He got himself the free agent situation. He got tagged, and he winds up getting paid, even though he was, at that point, and I still think even now, a very good NFL quarterback, but not one of the four or five guys that we put at the very top. No. But you get yourself in that situation and you get paid. Shout out and to Todd France and Mike McCartney doing. for making those deals happen. But that's exactly right. Greeny, ask me what Dak should be doing right now. What should Dak be doing right now? Not a damn thing. <laughs> Literally not a thing. Not Don't a pick damn. Up a pen. Don't pick up your phone. Because this kind of reminds me, you know, you know, you're dating a guy and he's not sure if he likes you which is crazy, because look at you, right? But he's not sure. Then he wants to circle back after you're happy, after you're content, you've moved on. Now it's like, oh, hey, baby, hey, hey, hey. So about that long-term thing, you know what you need to do? Hang up that phone, girl. And that is what Dax should Don't pick up the phone, Todd France. This is why you have him. You've already played the game masterfully. Now you are the precipice of uncharted terror. Boy, don't do a thing. Go out there, focus on the season, and you then know, you'll be the bell of the ball. That, that, that's extraordinary. I'm going to tell you, if you're interested in dating a girl and her best friend is Kimberly Martin, run, bro. Just, just run. This shit, it, it ain't going it it to last, man. It, it, she's the shit starter. Girl, mm, you, you, you know that. Narrowly well, a, <laughs> a, a picture well painted and a point well made. So, so Lewis, that, that, that is the situation, right? I mean, NFL owners, mm -hmm. you know them as well as anybody, are accustomed to holding mm -hmm. all of the cards. They, they are, they are, they are mm -hmm. basically, they start every hand with a royal flush. This is one of those yeah. very unique circumstances in which the owner really doesn't have yeah. any cards to play. Yeah, and I, and I think here, like, it, it's kind of bizarre that when when the discussion, when the like public discourse comes to or centers around players and whether or not they should honor contracts, whether or not they should like not hold out, whether or not in a situation like Dax, they should go ahead and take it to, you know, to the very end and maximize all their leverage, that most times people side with ownership and they say that players are being greedy. Players don't understand just how lucky they are because they're not out there working a nine to five like everyone else. Look, this is the business of sports. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. And a lot of times it's business. A lot, you know, almost every time it's personal business. And for Dak, look, this is personal. He hears the chatter. He knows what, you know, the questions still surrounding him, probably internally and externally as far as this guy's just a regular season quarterback. We can get anybody to just go ahead and do what he does in the playoffs. But can you get anybody to do what he has done during the regular season that gives you a chance to get to the playoffs mm -hmm. in the first place. And don't give me the Cooper Rush argument for when he filled in for Dak Prescott. Because you know what, as Bill Belichick used to tell me, you know what the difference is between backups and starters, starters All right, and Hall we'll, of Famers, we'll leave it right Hall of Famers and I You get the gist of what they're talking about. It is interesting to say the least. Um, We'll see what happens on here, whether or not Dak Prescott gets signed now. Of course, if he doesn't, we'll end up having the speculation all season long. This is Dak Prescott's last year, which may be exactly what Jerry Jones wants. As always, I appreciate you guys. Um, I have uh, I, I won't be on Dan Salio's show today because I, I have to take care of some family business. And I um, hope you guys understand. I hope the Eagle fans understand. I'm Mark Holmes, and I'll see you soon. Disrespected yet? Does this defense have any heart? That's no, tough. they suck. I've been telling you all season, they Philly. Shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> Don't you hear me, Jordan Davis, <laughs> Caleb Carter, Slight? They shit on you. Oh. They've shit on you. <laughs> they have shit on you. Don't Don't you hear me, Jordan Davis, <laughs> Caleb Carter, Slight? They shit on you. Kill them. <laughs>